This time on Rider Up Video, we talk about scootering in the X Games, and we talk about the biggest changes in skateboarding in the past 10 years. Let's get into it. Welcome back to Rad Rat Video, the channel where you can learn something new about skateboarding three times a week. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we dig into something in skateboarding world and culture from learning about tricks and history to learning about your favorite pros, learning about skateboard video games, and a lot of other topics thanks to this series, Ask Rad Rat. Got a couple good ones for you today. The first one is from Mickey Bones underscore, who asks, when do you think we'll see scootering in the X Games? Does scootering still need to cement its culture? In other words, do scooter kids need to grow up first in their 20s and 30s and beyond? Also, how much is a scooter industry's annual worth? There are some pro scooterers who are older adults in their 20s and 30s, but it's definitely not nearly as big as skateboarding, both from the amount of people who are involved and also from the outside corporate involvement, like no one's sponsored by Monster and stuff like that. Maybe there are a couple, don't correct me, but not from a major, um, perspective. And so I think that uh, there would definitely need to be a lot more interest in scootering at that level. Scootering is huge if all you want to do is ride around. You can go to a skate park and try to like ride up a bank and then fall over. But how many people are really taking it to the next level and getting really, really good compared to how many people do that with skateboarding? Uh, it's not really that close and it's tough to find exact numbers. So I was looking up your question about the annual worth and I wasn't able to find sales figures. If you look up scootering sales numbers, you'll see like scooters, like the kind you ride around on the bike lane on the road, not um, those kind of scooters. So it's tough to find exact numbers. So what I did was I went to Google Trends and I started to look it up and compare it to skateboarding. So if you take uh, Razor scooters, the kind that's mostly used by kids who just like to mess around with them, I compare that to penny boards, which are the skateboarding equivalent, something you just ride around on and mess around with. Nothing too serious, but this is how they compare. So the penny boards are a lot higher, um, a lot more interest in them right now. So what I did was I looked up Lucky Scooters, and that is one of the bigger brands that I know about that sells like professional level stuff. And this is their chart for the last five years. It's been pretty stagnant, nothing too crazy going on. It doesn't seem like it's building and building and building. It just looks like it's kind of the same. So I don't really see scootering getting to a level where it's gotten big enough that it'll be accepted into the X Games. I think there'll be a lot of hurdles to jump with nobody really wanting them there. Um, but uh, you never really know. I'd much rather see BMX make a big comeback because I think that's a lot more interesting and very similar stuff. You might as well do it 30 feet in the air and do a double backflip on a bike rather than on a bank with a scooter. But that's just my thoughts, we'll see. Uh, but I really don't think it's gonna make it anytime soon, if at all. The next question is from Robert TRJ13, who asks, so I'm a new skater, so I don't know how skating was a while back. What's the biggest difference between skating now and skating 10 years ago? Well, you've come to the right place because I've been skating for 16 years, but I wanna go back, let's say 12 years, uh, just before smartphones and stuff started to come out, because that's when the biggest change was. I think the most huge change, this thing that has really made a giant difference in skateboarding, is the way that we record and share video with each other. You know, the way that it used to be back then, it was very uncommon or difficult to get digital video onto your computer. You know, you might have a, a digital camera and that could record a couple of seconds at a time, um, but you're not gonna film a video part with it, super compressed, it's gonna look really bad. The only reason to use that would be to share it online, but there's so many steps to take in between. The biggest thing that most people did was they would buy a capture card for their computer. And then you would hook your VCR or your camera, depending on what kind of tape you were using, up to your camera, up to your computer, and then you would record it from the camera to the computer. And uh, it was just a lot of steps. So let's talk about learning and sharing trick ideas and stuff like that. Back in the day, forums were really big. You would go on and do it onto a discussion board and you would talk to other people about tricks and all that. Uh, they've all seemed to pretty much died out at this point. But you'd go on there and you'd talk about something and you would debate things and no one would have any video to show. I remember this one time, there's a trick that uh, Rodney Mullen does in one of the Plan B videos. He does a 360 nollie kickflip. Okay, it looks like this. And I remember this big debate about whether he's actually doing a kickflip or if he's kicking the wheel on the way around, which was completely ridiculous but there was no way to get clean footage of it to put it online. No one could embed screenshots and GIFs of a zoomed in view of his foot and exactly what it's doing. It was just 
answer after answer of people debating what he was doing and going back and watching their own copies. So that was one thing. Also, if you wanted to learn tricks or if you think you had invented something, um, people helping you out or showing you what to do was a lot more difficult. So let's say you were having trouble with your 360 flip and I wanted to show you how I throw my weight back or whatever the case may be, okay? I can't just go out, prop up my phone, hit record, and then send it to you on Instagram five minutes later. What I would have to do was get out my camera, pull my uh, battery pack off the charger, plug that in, go outside, set it up, record, then I'd have to go back to my computer, plug in my stuff, open up the program, start the recording process, rewind the tape to the right part, hit play, hit record, get that clip, cut it, edit it, um, save it down, convert it so that it's um, compressed and smaller, find a file sharing website before YouTube, and then send that to the person. Hopefully that person can actually open the same type of compression format that you've used, and then they can watch it. So that was a big, big difference. It made it so much more difficult to do basic stuff like that. Uh, nowadays, if you wanna look up any kind of trick, you wanna learn anything that you could ever think of, you can look it up online. And I may have taught it, other people may have taught it, there may be not a trick tip, but like a thousand frame per second, super slow motion clip of somebody doing it and just getting information and seeing skateboarding and learning more about skateboarding is a whole lot easier than it used to be. Um, as far as the actual tricks in the skating, you know, that has changed a bit too, but not quite as much as the way that we consume skateboarding and the way that we talk about skateboarding. So hopefully that gives you a glimpse as to what things were like. Um, I'm sure you could go back another 10 years and it would be much, much worse, but uh, that gives you a little bit of appreciation for how simple things are right now. So I hope that helped. If you have any questions for next time, there are three ways to ask me. There are links to these below. You can ask me on Instagram or Twitter, send me a DM, or on my website, radratvideo.com. You can fill out the form, ask Radrat, and send that to me right there, and I will take a look at it. But until next time, here's more videos you can check out. You can also tap my logo on screen right here to subscribe so you can keep learning new things about skateboarding three times a week. Thanks for watching.